Welcome and thanks for joining me for this overview and quick start to the module two short paper. So I want to set the stage for you for this assignment. We're continuing to develop our definition of what sustainability is, especially through recognizing sustainability issues in our own daily lives. So this writing assignment gives you an opportunity to examine some of the sustainability issues in your own daily life and to consider the impact they may be having. So let's get started here. For this short paper, you're asked to write about two prompts. The focus is on the impact of an organization, the impacts an organization can have on human behavior. Here we recall that an organization is a type of a system and that as such, it has connections to other systems. First, you're going to identify an organization to focus on. You want to pick one where you can identify the impacts the organization's practices have on human behavior. Then after describing the impacts it has on human behavior, you'll identify the behaviors it encourages and discourages by explaining how the organization accomplishes it. So I know sometimes picking the organization can be the hardest part of this assignment. So I want to give you an example. The example I want to share with you is an organization called White Oak Pastures. White Oak Pastures is a sixth generation farm. It's in Georgia and it began as a traditional farm and ran as a traditional farm until just a few years ago when the fifth generation farmer, by the way, his name is Will Harris, began to practice regenerative farming land management and humane animal husbandry. The result has been a revitalization of the entire community. The changes the organization made have encouraged other farmers to shift their practices to more sustainable land and animal management, and they've led to the development of a customer base that now consumes healthier products. They provided a large number of jobs in the local community, and they've discouraged the use of pesticides and erosion producing land management. See how I did that? Now it's your turn to dig into an organization and see what you can discover. The second prompt in this assignment asks us to identify whether the organization takes an ego or eco approach to leadership by providing examples. The examples should focus on the specific behaviors that the organization uses that suggest the ego or eco approach. Then thinking about the sustainability of the organization, what practices does the organization employ that foster its ability to persist into the future? So again, as the example, in the case of white oak pastures, I think it's almost all about eco with a tiny bit of ego thrown in. Here's why. The transformation of the farming operations from traditional to regenerative were done with the goal of the farm becoming not only carbon neutral, but actually carbon negative. Yep, carbon negative. The ego part comes in when you hear the fifth generation farmer talk about his interest in the farm continuing on to the next generation, which it already is with his children taking over some of the operations and his grandchildren even starting to work in the business. So I hope this example is really helpful for you as you choose an organization to focus on. And remember, if you need help, I'm here to support you. Just reach out. So let's take a look at the uh, grading rubric that we will use to assess your short paper submission. I want to go through each of the rows, and uh, this will give you a good idea of what I'll be looking for. So the top row is illustration. I'm going to look for how you describe the organization you chose. How did you make the case for the impacts the organization has on human behavior? Did you provide examples of how the organization encourages certain behaviors and discourages other behaviors? Next row down, ego or eco. Did your explanation of how the organization uses an ego or eco approach to leadership include examples of behavior that support the approach? And how well did you assess the likelihood the organization will persist into the future? So the last two rows, clear communication. Is your short paper clear and concise? Is it easy for the reader to follow? And does the reader understand the purpose of your writing? And then the last row here, citations and attributions. Were you able to cite your sources when needed? Remember, we're gonna use an APA format here. 
So if you have questions about when and how to cite your sources, there is a really great resource called Citing Your Sources. It's on the Shapiro Library, or you can reach out to academic support or reach out to me for help either way. All right. Thanks so much for joining me for this uh, module two short paper overview and quick start. I'm here to support you. Reach out if you need help. Thanks very much.